Slide 1. Introduction to General Ledger. Charter Technofunctional Institute brings to you Technofunctional Body of Knowledge. Today's tutorial will cover the topic on Introduction to General Ledger. This is part of series on General Ledger under the Process Area of Finance. This tutorial is brought to you by www.technofund.com, a website dedicated to the profession of technofunctional professionals, helping technical experts gain functional and business expertise. All videos are available at website www.technofund.com for free. In today's tutorial we will learn the concept of general ledger and its role in any automated accounting packages including ERPs like Oracle and SAP. We will understand what we mean by general ledger, what are the functionalities offered by general ledger and the financial processes that happen in GL. This will provide us with the understanding of the key functional areas of any general ledger system and will be beneficial to any professional working on a project that includes general ledger. The intended audience for this tutorial is anybody who wants to understand the overview of GL irrespective of his IT background. For IT professionals this overview lesson relates the GL concepts to automated accounting systems. Technofunk is on a mission to create technology. What is a general ledger? The general ledger is a collection of the group of accounts that supports the value items shown in the major financial statements. Every corporation needs to prepare financial statements like balance sheet and profit and loss account. General ledger provides the detailed account balances for the formation of these financial reportings. General Ledger is built up by posting transactions recorded in various supplemental books, which are known as modules in many accounting packages like the sales books, purchases books, cash and bank book and general journals book. For any company that has large number of transactions, the general ledger needs be supported by one or more subsidiary ledgers that provide details for accounts in the general ledger. Business enters into many activities and transactions throughout the day. It is not necessary that all activities have financial impact. For an example, if a company issues a purchase order for buying certain goods, no financial transaction has happened unless the goods are delivered and invoices raised on the company issuing the purchase order. All transactions that have financial impact are recorded in general ledger. In accounting packages or in the RPs like Oracle and SAP General Ledger is the central repository of all accounting information. The diagram here depicts that all activities or transactions get recorded in various sub-ledgers. Transactions having financial impact are posted to the General Ledger. These transactions build balances from which the financial statements are generated. Let's move to slide number 2. Slide 3 Subsidiary Ledgers Balances in general ledger are often supported by various sub-ledgers. A subsidiary ledger is a group of similar accounts whose combined balances equal the balance in a specific general ledger account. Subsidiary ledgers facilitate recording of complete financial and other information related to the transaction. To give you an example, in the fixed assets subsidiary ledger you can find all the details pertaining to fixed assets owned by the company. Apart from the financial details like cost of the assets, other information like date of purchase, date when asset was put to use in business, name of the supplier, storage and location of the asset etc. is also captured in subsidiary ledgers. The general ledger account that summarizes a subsidiary ledger's account balances is called a control account or master account. Accounting transactions are captured in general ledger at a summarized level and all relevant details for that transaction are available in the subsidiary ledgers. Diagram on the right depicts some of the commonly used subsidiary ledgers. They are fixed assets, accounts payable, accounts receivable projects and inventory management and they all send the financial data to the general ledger. Let's now understand the concept of subsidiary ledger by having a look at the accounts receivable process. We have accounts receivable are 
subsidiary ledger that includes a separate account for each customer who makes credit purchases. The combined balance of every account in this R subsidiary ledger equals to the balance of accounts receivable account in the general ledger. Accounts receivable account is also known as customer receivable control account. Subsidiary ledgers contain supplemental accounts that provide the detail to support the summary balance in a control account. Subsidiary ledgers also capture details pertaining to financial transactions like tax numbers, contact person, telephone number or copy of invoice. In IT, subsidiary ledgers are also called modules in the accounting system. Let's move and see some examples on subsidiary ledgers. Slide for example of subsidiary ledgers if a company does not maintain the subledgers and keeps all the information in the general ledger, imagine what will be the size of your general ledger, if you have 8,000 customer accounts, 4,000 supplier accounts and 2,000 items you trade in. On an average you enter into 5,000 different transactions with your suppliers and customers who are spread across the globe. Looks scary. Subsidiary ledgers help manage and store specific information regarding each of the control accounts in your GL. You can keep all the details in your subledgers and post the summation for each account in the control account maintained at the general ledger. Some commonly used subsidiary ledgers are accounts payable, accounts payable, which is also abbreviated as a P is used to manage suppliers and payments to suppliers. Main transactions are recording of invoices for purchases and managing the payments for these invoices. From accounts payable subledger you can get details of amounts payable to any supplier at any point in time. Accounts receivable, accounts receivable, which is also abbreviated as a R is used to manage sales of goods and services to customers and entering receipts for the sales made. Main transactions are recording of sales invoices and managing the receipts from the customers. From accounts receivable subledger you can get details of amounts receivable from any customer at any point in time. Inventory, inventory ledger, is used to manage your stock or items you buy, sell or manufacture. Inventory ledger is used to manage item prices and movements of stock items due to trading transactions. From inventory subledger you can get details of quantity and cost price of any inventory item at any point in time. Fixed assets, fixed assets, which is also abbreviated as F is used to manage purchase, sale, allocation and retirement of fixed assets. Depreciation on assets is calculated in this ledger to depict the current value of the fixed assets. Main transactions are recording of purchase of fixed assets, calculating depreciation on assets and retirement of assets. From fixed assets subledger you can get details of any fixed asset like original cost, current depreciated value, location etc. at any point in time. Projects Certain companies like real estate builders and construction companies undertake various independent projects. They are interested in financial information for each of the project. In that case a subledger is required for each project. Projects is used to track project milestone, costs and resources and to make billing to the customers. From projects subledger you can get details of any project like percentage complete, current cost etc. at any point in time. Cash management. Similarly cash management subledger is used to manage cash and its reconciliation with bank. It provides you with the current position of the cash flows. Payroll, payroll subsidiary ledger can be used to manage salaries and wages. You can record calculations and payments made to each of the employee in this subledger. Now as we have basic understanding of GL and its subsidiary ledgers let's look at some benefits of having an automated general ledger system. Slide 5 GL and accounting software. Now we understand that the general ledger is the central repository for all financial activity. The main purpose of a general ledger system is to record financial activity of a company and to produce financial and management reports to help stakeholders make decisions. 
Stakeholder can make effective decisions only when the underlying financial data is available timely on demand and correct. A good general ledger software application will provide management with accurate, up-to-date information in order to make short and long-term business decisions. It also has inbuilt controls and processes necessary to ensure that the correct information is reported. Income Statements Balance sheets and statements of cash flow are standard reports needed by management to judge business progress and these reports can be built using the trial balance created in General Ledger. In an HERP or an automated accounting package all other subsidiary ledgers, also known as modules, sends financial data to General Ledger. Data from different modules can be imported automatically using integrations with subledgers. General Ledger validates the financial data and updates the balances to the respective accounts. Having a good General Ledger system and processes in place helps the organizations in following ways. Organizations can enforce a common chart of account structure across different processes, modules and entities, enabling them to manage their financial processes in an integrated manner by allowing greater flexibility and control over the journal entry process. The general ledger is the foundation of any accounting system, it improves transaction processing and control. It collects transaction details from other applications allowing preparation of key financial reports. Control on journal entries creates an auditable record of business's complete financial history. Using general ledger software allows for detailed report generation according to multiple report types and report parameters facilitates better and faster decision making. The ability to access financial records by departments, cost centers, or other accounting divisions, provides visibility to understand business performance across the organization. It enables tracking critical information on companies' financial position and supplements it with various statutory and management reporting options. Let's now shift the focus on understanding the typical accounting cycle and automated general ledger systems in the next topic. Slide 6 Accounting Cycle Before you can start recording financial transactions in any books you need to have some basic information available. The minimum required information is, nature of parties entering into the transaction, this leads to having chart of accounts. Date when the transaction took place, this leads to having accounting periods and calendars. Money involved in the financial transaction, this leads to having currencies. Once you have all the three above, the typical accounting cycle works as follows, manage accounting periods slash calendars, you need to make available the accounting period in which the transaction will take place. Manage currency. The currency used to make transaction needs to be available in the system. Import transactions slash record transactions. If you are recording transactions in your subsidiary ledgers, you need to import the financial portion, that is, debit and credit of transaction amounts and accounts, to general ledger. Alternatively you can directly record these transactions in the general ledger system. Review transactions slash edit transactions. Once you have the transactions available in the general ledger system, you can review them and edit them for any errors. Transaction approval, segregation of duties concept requires having more than one person to complete the journal creation task. NGL this operation by getting the financial transaction approved by more than one individual prevents fraud and error. Analyze and manipulate. You can inquire your transactions and balances in general ledger system. You might need to analyze and manipulate your data to comply with your management and statutory reporting needs. If any adjustments need to be done they can be carried out in the general ledger. Manage consolidation. You may need to consolidate your accounts for statutory reporting or management reporting purposes. If your currencies between your various entities are different. You may need to revalue and translate your balances. Then you need to bring all your balances in common form up for consolidation. This process is called accounting cycle because this is an ongoing process. Accounting principle of going concern assumes that the business will remain in existence for an indefinite period of time. During this time, your accounting periods will change. 
At the end of the period you will consolidate and close your books. Then you will open a new period and continue recording transactions. And the accounting cycle continues forever with business cycle. In the next topic we will understand the transaction flow in the general ledger system. Slide 7 GL Process Flow Create Journal Slash Import Journal from Subledger Accounting journals can be created directly in the general ledger. They can also be created in subsidiary ledgers and can then be imported to general ledger. Review journals. Once the journal is available in the general ledger system you can query that journal. While reviewing the journal, you can make edits slash corrections if required. Approved journals. Accounting prudence require that all financial transactions should be reviewed by someone other than the person creating the transaction. Approval ensures validity and correctness of the transaction. Journals post. Journals posting is a process of updating the database with the amounts. Once the journals are posted you can query for updated account balances. Journals balance is updated. Posting process updates the journal balances. You can inquiry the account balances in general ledger for all posted transactions. Run reports. General Ledger has many built-in reports. Most common reports run from General Ledger are Transactions Register and Trial Balance Report. This is a generic General Ledger process. Some systems may have slight variations to the above process, but the underlying concepts remain more or less same. Now we will understand what drill down means in automated accounting systems in the next topic. Slide 8 Inquiry and Drill Down, in it, to drill down means to move from summary information to detailed data by focusing in on something. Clicking on an item moves you to a level of greater detail. Drilling down through a database involves accessing information by starting with a general category and moving through the hierarchy, from category to file, file to table, table to record, and record to field. Drilling down provides a method of exploring multidimensional data by moving from one level of detail to the next. Automated general ledgers incorporate drill down functionality to ensure you can view the transactional details from the summary of balances. You can drill down to your subledger's details from general ledger and can get all of the transactions that comprise an account balance, regardless of which subledger originated the transaction. The basic steps are, 1. Inquire online account balances or summary balances 2. View accounting information, you can drill down to journal from account balance 3. Drill down to subledger, you can drill down from journal to originating subledger 4 and 5. Further drill down to subledger transaction, you can see the transaction in the subledger and review all transactional details available at the subledger from general ledger itself. This is the last topic in basic GL overview chapter. In the next slide you will visit the topics that will be covered in next chapter titled GL Concepts. Slide 9 GL Concepts in the next part of the series we will focus on GL concepts in detail to build strong conceptual foundation. The topics for the next series are, Accounting Periods and Calendars Adjustment Period Currency, Functional and Foreign Chart of Accounts Journals, Entry and Import Posting and Balances Review and Approval Accruals and Reversals Recurring Journals Allocations Intercompany Trial Balance Next in Series Process Area, Finance Chapter. General Ledger Topic 